Well, good afternoon and welcome to We the People Prepping. This is Dan. Hey, I just want to expand a little bit on uh, what John at Prepper Nation was talking about this morning about uh, what happens if you know martial law is declared, they start going house to house and um, you know taking what you have as a prepper, you know, your, your stockpile of food and so, so forth and what you can do about it. Well, um, he was talking about, well, hide your food, you know, in your house, like in an attic or, or stuff like that. But, you know, I'm going to give you some more in-depth ideas, really. It's stuff that we've done around my, around my bug out location as well as around my house. Okay, you know, of course, we, we have some buckets of food that are uh, watertight and everything inside of them are uh, vacuum sealed watertight at, and we've buried them in the in various locations in the yard. Um, but there are other steps that you can take, like, uh, for instance, we have a black 55 gallon drum that uh, we'd bought it had never been used. It, you know, it uh, it's watertight you know uh we still vacuum seal stuff that we put in but we have uh stored food in there um you know everything from uh canned foods you know canned goods that uh, we self canned uh you know home canned goods i should say uh, to uh dry beans rice you know even some uh jugs of water uh now, what we've done with these 55-gallon drums is, like, we slapped a label on one that says waste oil. And after we put the food down in there, okay, we have a false bottom that, well, I, I guess you could call it a false top, uh, that we sit down on top of everything that has some uh, oil and water in it. And we sit it down on top and it fits perfectly in there. And then we put the, the ring back on and seal it all up and everything. So if somebody, say, opened up the little little screw cap on the top to, to see what was in it, they could smell the oil and so forth. But underneath, you know, that, that's only a few inches thick, or deep, I should say. And uh, But underneath of it, we have food stored up. See, little ideas like that comes in real handy makes it hard for them to find your food you know they'll think okay well it's just as waste oil from when he changes the oil in his car you know uh we've done certain things like that out of, at the bug out location since it's got a lot of farmland out there we will uh you know put on their uh inhalation hazard uh you know and stuff like that and and uh we'll put like a it's got the false top again as well. You know, we'll put a little bit of something in there to, that smells bad. You know, uh, just just little things like that that you can do. We've taken, <clears throat> and, and on the pond out at, out at the bug out location, um, you've seen the swimming pool buoys, right? Uh, the the rope that goes across that has the little little buoy on it. Okay. We have uh, taken five-gallon buckets, filled them full of food, uh, uh, and they're vacuum sealed inside there again. Uh, but we we take those and we make them heavy enough to and and not a, there's not really a lot of room in there for air or nothing. You know, like we have five-gallon buckets of, of beans and so forth. You know, uh, but we will take those, tie a uh, plastic rope you know um the i guess it's a like a nylon rope uh something that doesn't degrade very easy anyhow we'll tie that well to a bunch of like three buckets and then we will drop those buckets if you need to you can weigh the buckets down put some sand in the bottom or whatever <sighs> excuse me and uh drop those with the the rope attached to it with a buoy tied to it out in the middle of the pond Okay, who's going to go out there and, you know, the, all they're going to see is a buoy up above the water. But below the water, hell, we've got three five-gallon buckets of, of food sitting right there. You know, uh, 
Another thing that we've done is where I live, it's it's pretty much rural community. Okay, I live in a small town, but you know it's it's all farmland and old rundown farmhouses out in the country around us and stuff like that. Well, you know, there's some of these houses that have been sitting there empty, falling down for 30, 40 years. You know, I mean, they, they're they pretty dilapidated. We will take it, you know, yeah, we don't own the property, but we'll take a, a couple of five-gallon buckets of beans and rice or, or whatever and put them in those old houses. You know, just, and, and, you know, they'll gather dust and everything, so they'll look like they've been sitting there for a long while. I mean, you can even throw throw some dust up in the air and let it settle on them, you know, make it look like they've been there for a while. So, you know, even if the military went went and searched those old abandoned houses, they're just going to see a couple of old dusty buckets sitting there and not really think a whole lot of it. I mean, you know, nobody's lived there for a long time. So, you know, and, and all of these ideas are, are places that are close to us and close to our, our bug out location, you know, now, eventually, we're going to move out to our bug out location. We just got to get everything finished up the way we want it and everything. You know, finish paying off the place that we're at now, and then we're going to rent it out and, and move out to the bug out location. But, uh, you know, these are just a, a few ideas uh, of things that you can do, you know, uh, along with, you know, storing caches of food, you know, uh, off of your property, you know, uh, like not that far from where I live, there's a, a wooded area where there used to be a house back there, but the, the, the house collapsed in and, you know, uh, we, we've gone back into the woods there by the house and buried, you know, caches uh, of supplies and stuff like, uh, you know, in six inch uh, PVC pipe with caps and screw pieces on the end, you know, buried those, that, they've got food, they've got water, you know, water filters, you know, just various things that we would need to survive. But we've got enough of those buried around. I mean, we, we've got probably three or four months worth of food just in, in those little caches, you know. But uh, these are these are just little ideas, you know. Um, a friend of mine that doesn't live very far from me, he owns a junkyard, you know. And we have, you know, I have his permission and, and everything, and... Uh, we've stored food items, you know, long-term food items in the trunks of some of the old uh, rundown cars, you know, uh, that he's got sitting out there piled up on top of each other and shit. So, you know, it's, it's a good place to hide them, especially since I know the person that, that owns the property. He's a prepper as well. He has his own stashes out there as well. So, you know, uh, there's all sorts of creative ways to hide food, you know, to where, you know, if they come door to door and they, they take everything that's in my house, hell, I've still got a few years of uh, supplies stashed away that no, in places people would never even think to look. That's like if they come out to my bug out location, we have several years worth of food stored up out there. Okay. It, and if they took all that food, there's still more of it that they don't know about, that they can't find. You know, uh, it, it just takes a little bit of time and, and effort, but you can you can hide food in a lot of places. Like I said, people thought I was nuts when I when I started doing the uh, one where we're hiding food in the pond. You know, so. Uh, I proved to them that it works. Okay, we, we dropped uh, uh, the buckets of food down there, and a year later we came back and, and pulled them up out of there. You know, opened them up, and the food was still dry. You know, there wasn't no water inside the bucket, uh, and uh, all the food was still safe and secured inside of its packaging that where we'd vacuum sealed it and everything. So I mean, you know, it's a good place to hide it. You know, and. Uh, some of the buckets, yeah, we had to, to weigh them down with some sand. Yeah, it, it takes a little effort to pull them back up out of the water. You know, you go out there on a on a little bass boat or, or you know, a little rowboat, uh, even a canoe. You know, it's going to take you a bit to, to pull that up out of there. It, it took me a little while considering, you know, the, the little pond's about 20 feet deep or so, you know. And that stuff is pretty heavy that I dropped down there. So, but, you know. 
you need to think about these things that because if you store all of your stuff at the at one location somebody you know the military or you know marauders or whatever may wind up taking what you have you know and if you've got it all stored up in one spot well now you're going to starve you know the same way with your uh self-defense tools and and other things that you may need you know buy extras stash them around here and there you'll find creative ways to do it I and mean, there there's some trees that we've got stuff you know put into you know old rotted trees that are kind of hollowed out you know but uh there's just so many places you know um where I live, there's a, a couple of farmers fields that have old cars sitting in them. We've stored food in, in the, the trunks of those old cars. Yeah, uh, but just think about it. You know, I'm sure that some of y'all could come up with some really creative ideas on where to hide food, you know, so that you would have it if, if you know, martial law was declared and they came and confiscated your food and, and supplies and stuff, you know. It's always good to have stashes of, you know, uh, food, water, water purification, you know, uh, clothing even, you know, you know, they're, the odds are they're not going to uh, come after your clothing. But, you know, I mean, there's, I, I store extra clothes at, because you never know when you might need them. Like if I have to bug out, I, you know, and... I've got a, a spare change of clothes in my bug out bag, and then I've got what's on me. Well, I'm going to need more clothes than that, you know, especially socks. I mean, damn, I got socks stashed around everywhere because, uh, uh, you know, your feet get wet, whatever. You don't want me walking around and get jungle rot in your feet. But uh, just give these things a little thought, I'm sure. You know, some of you might come up with some creative ideas. Hell, leave them in the comments. Let me know weird places you've hid food before, you know. But uh, I'm going to stand with We the People Prepping. I appreciate your time. God bless each and every one of you. If you like my content, please hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell, give me a thumbs up, share my content with your friends and family. But we will talk to you later. You all have a good day. Bye.